Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, we will start with unit number 2 of the subject Radiation and Microwave Theory. We have finished unit number 1. In unit number 1, last topic is Antenna Polarization. Actually, this antenna polarization ka topic we have already electromagnetics mein learn kiya hai, so I am not going to make a separate video on that part. So, I will provide the link of that video in the description box. Please do watch that video. So, dear students, today's topic is microwaves and waveguides. First, let us talk about microwave signals or microwaves. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. Define microwave signal and enlist its advantages and applications. So, first we will talk about the definition of microwaves. Microwaves are EM waves. EM stands for electromagnetic waves. So, these are electromagnetic waves having the frequency range, F means frequency, having the frequency range 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz and the corresponding wavelength is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.3 meters to 0.001 meters. Now, let us talk about advantages. This frequency band is actually a large frequency band. So, microwaves are having high frequency band and because of which, it can generate a directed beam of microwave signal. Second, microwaves can propagate through ionized layer surrounding the earth. Third, it can be used for duplex communication. We know that duplex is two-way communication. Next, it carries high information. So, microwaves are supposed to be having high information capacity. Next, it can easily interact with the crystal. So, these are few advantages of microwave signals. Now applications. First and important application is microwaves are used for ranging objects in the space. I mean in the space space. Second, they are used in multi-channel television and telecommunication systems. Third, radio astronomical research in the space. Fourth, we know that this is very common example. Micro ovens, they are used for cooking purposes. Next, they are used uh, in case of drying machines in the paper industries. Next, for the testing of metals. Then, next is to study properties of the matter. Then, the microwaves are also used in case of nuclear research. Then, in as far as these biomedical applications are concerned, microwave radiometer is an important uh, application, important device. Microwave radi radiometers are used to detect the exact cancer tissues. Next is microwaves are used in case of satellite communication. So these are advantages and applications of the microwave. The next part is waveguides. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this. What are the waveguides and what is T and TM mode? Or what are, what are the waveguides and what are different modes of operation? So first let us talk about the waveguide. We know that. The microwaves are used to transfer energy from one point to another point. Now, to do this transmission of energy from one point to another point, certain structure is used. So, to transfer microwave signals, hollow metallic tubes are used. So, if the metallic tube is having rectangular structure, just like I have told you, microwave signal we are transmitting in a hollow tube. Mein se, Agar hollow tube rectangular shape, it is called rectangular waveguide. On the contrary, if the hollow tube which is used to transmit the micro signals is circular in nature, then it is circular waveguide. So these are the two types of waveguides. Why the name waveguide? Very simple. These micro signals are transmitting through this structure which is a metallic tube, hollow metallic tube. So this metallic tube guides the waves passing through it. So it is called wave guide. Now refer this diagram. Here I have shown a rectangular wave guide. Two conductors are shown. These are the two conductors, upper conductor and lower conductor. This is the incident wave, incident microwave signal. Theta i is an angle made by this incident wave with respect to this lower conducting plane. Now, there are two types, two parts. One is E bar and another is H bar. We know that E bar is electric field intensity, H bar is magnetic field intensity. <clears throat> if 
the direction of E bar, if the direction of E bar is transverse, that means perpendicular to the direction of power of a wave. Now, let us brush up this concept. In electromagnetics, we have studied that according to pointing theorem, P bar is E bar cross H bar. E bar is electric field, H bar is magnetic field, P, P bar is the power. So, all these three terms are perpendicular to each other. That means, if E bar is along X axis, H bar will be along Y axis, P bar will be then along Z axis because P bar power, E bar electric field and H bar magnetic field are mutually perpendicular to each other. So, if E bar electric field intensity is in transverse or in the direction of P bar, that means transverse perpendicular to the direction of P bar, then this particular wave is called TE mode, transverse electric mode. Same way, if magnetic field is transverse or perpendicular to the direction of propagation, let us assume that direction of propagation is uh, Z, that is the power of a wave is along Z axis and if H bar is uh, transverse to that direction, then it is called T m wave tm mode that is transverse magnetic mode now if incident wave falls then it strikes one of the conducting plates gets reflected from this plate then again it strikes to the upper conducting plate again gets reflected and likewise there are back and forth reflections through this hollow metallic structure and accordingly the wave propagates in the forward direction. This small b is the notation which is used to uh, indicate the gap between these two plates. So this is about T and Tm mode that is transverse electric and transverse magnetic mode. If both electric and magnetic field components are transverse then it is called TEM mode that is transverse electromagnetic mode. So this is the general structure of a waveguide and uh, what are the different types of modes that are possible in case of waveguide that is TE, TEM and TEM mode. Next is comparison between waveguide and coaxial cable. So this chart shows the comparative analysis of waveguide and a coaxial cable. We have discussed the concept of waveguide. It is hollow metallic structure which is used to guide the micro signals passing through it. Coaxial cable, as everyone knows, it is basically consisting of inner copper conductor, which is a conductor through which actual current flows. So, first point is this waveguide is a high pass filter. As the name indicates, since it is a high pass filter, only the frequencies above a certain level, above the cutoff frequencies are passed whereas coaxial cable acts as all pass filters that means all the frequencies are passed. The TEM that is transverse electromagnetic mode does not exist in case of waveguide whereas in case of coaxial cable transverse electromagnetic that is TEM mode exists. Third point is these waveguides are applicable for higher transmission powers whereas coaxial cables are mainly used for lower transmission powers. Ideally, there is no power loss in case of waveguide whereas in case of coaxial cables, there is a significant amount of power loss. Then waveguides does not require any conductors because it is basically a hollow metallic tube whereas as I said, a copper conductor is usually used in case of coaxial cable so it requires conductors. Then last point is energy propagation in case of waveguide takes place with the help of TE that is transverse electric or TM that is transverse magnetic wave whereas in case of coaxial cable energy propagation takes place with the help of TEM transverse electromagnetic wave. So this is the comparative analysis of waveguide and coaxial cable. So dear students that's it for today's session. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.